stage, Miss Janine Garofalo! just doing that because you're on TV <laughs> but it felt good nonetheless and I thank you anywho that threw me I'm not used to like affection like that it's weird <laughs> anyway uh, I got some good news if you're interested they've just opened a Starbucks in my living room so <laughs> thank you thank you yeah I feel the same way. Just roll out of bed and there you are. But the thing is, uh, I still don't have the Starbucks protocol right. You know, like I go in and I think, okay, I'm going to order and I'm going to get it right this time. I will have the non-fat grande hazelnut latte. And then their passive aggressive way when they reorder for me, it is the grande hazelnut non-fat latte. <laughs> and every day I go in, I think I'm going to get it right this time. I'm going to get it right. I'm like borderline diarrhea. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And uh, I'm always wrong. So you're asking me, why do you go to the Bennigan's of coffee? Why do you go there? Why do you go to like the polish and shine polite coffee? Why not Java or Insomnia or Ground Zero where the hipsters go? I'll tell you why I can't go there anymore. Because I went to see Weezer recently and I had to leave because it was too loud. <laughs> I left Weezer because it was too loud. <laughs> so now shamefacedly I go to Starbucks with all the people uh, my age <laughs> who get their coffee. Don't get me wrong, I like Weezer a lot. So anyway, I'm gonna do some impressions. Do you mind? Do some impressions for you at the film art. Oh, okay, okay, here's some impressions for you. Here's my first impression. <clears throat> here's my impression of someone watching the latest Mentos candy ad. Okay. All right. Latest Mentos ad, watching it. <laughs> what the fuck? Are they? Is that guy a mannequin or? Are these German? I don't. <laughs> Here's my impression of somebody watching Kathleen Turner being interviewed recently. The, the fuck, is she German now? Because she has some kind of accent now that is like Germanic, Teutonic. We don't know where Kathleen's from, but all the more exotic and therefore castable. Okay. <laughs> So I was thinking for the Mentos thing, they've really missed the boat though. I've got some new ideas for the Mentos candy tablet. Das Freshmacher. <laughs> People. For Mentos, what do you think, like a KKK rally? Or uh, maybe a guy trying to get to a gay pride parade? Or an Asian sweatshop? Just all you need is a headband. That's all you need. Okay. Okay, here's my impression of every movie trailer that you go see in a theater when you go see previews. In a world. Okay, that's it. That's what I say. It's always in a world and then, uh, or in a town. And then uh, Tommy Lee Jones will do something. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're in San Francisco and you watch a movie trailer of some kind, and inevitably somebody will go, Because <laughs> in San Francisco, you have to hiss something. Okay. See, I have a piece of paper. Don't mind me. Um, I am a professional, but I have a lot of NutraSweet in my system. I don't have a good short-term memory. I have a lot of, you know, things I want to discuss with you. I don't even remember what they are. I have them on a piece of paper. Don't mind me. If I glance over, it's not because I don't care. <laughs> it's because I can't remember anything. Okay. Um, I saw The Perez Family recently, that movie The Perez Family, and I really, really liked it. Don't hiss me. Is anybody hissing or did I just anticipate? You don't even know why you're hissing, but you have to. It's San Francisco. And I applaud that. Go ahead, hiss. But um, 
I saw the Perez family. I really enjoyed it. I like Marinara as a director. She's very good. She throws a lot of curveballs. I like that. Um, Marissa Tomei was in that movie, and she gained 20 pounds for the movie. Big hoo-ha, 20 pounds. So she was like tipping the scales at 120 when she did that movie. <laughs> it was like this big deal. She gained 20 pounds for the movie. You know what? I'm an actor, and I keep the 20 all the time. <laughs> I've got it right here. I'm ready to work. It's right here. Where, you know... If you're going to applaud, I don't know what to do with you. You cannot keep applauding. I mean, I know it makes me look good, but I don't know how to handle you. Um, so anyway, about the 20 pounds. Um, I'll tell you what, it's not easy to keep it on. You know, where's my kudos from Siskel and Ebert? Where's my, where's my uh, doff of the cap from Rex Reed? Because, you know, you think it's easy to keep it on. I'll tell you what, I pay a trainer a lot of money to come to my house. Every night he comes over. And uh, after dinner, he makes me drink vodka tonics. <laughs> and uh, watch a little TV, and then a few bowls of cereal and right to bed. <laughs> and I make no apologies. I make no apologies. The camera adds 10 pounds. You hear that theory? Camera adds 10 pounds. It's not a theory, it's a fact. Camera does add 10 pounds to anyone when they work. And, uh, Apparently, we don't have the technology to conquer that little aberration there. We can have Gump cavorting with dead presidents in a Jurassic summer, but we just don't, we don't get that 10 pound thing. I don't, what? Guys at ILM, you know, George Lucas is the nerds and they're like in this, we have a substance now that um, is very similar to uh, if a volcano erupts um, in the theater, there will be a substance that's li not unlike cotton candy that will be running down the aisles and you'll be able to touch it, but when you touch it, it will disappear. But um, the 10 pound thing, we don't understand. <laughs> and um, so yeah. That was that. Dave Matthews band and Hootie and the Blowfish. I gotta bring it up. Um, seem like nice guys. Seemingly very nice guys. But never has a CD purchase spoke more volumes about a person in, in their life. Hootie and Dave Matthews band. I know who you are. I know who you are. You're not an evil person. You're not a lawbreaker. Um, you don't rock as a rule. <laughs> But when you do, it's in a very VH1 kind of way. You know, <laughs> if you're into Hootie. And um, you like the show Friends a lot. <laughs> a lot. Um, you wish that Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan could star in every movie. <laughs> every movie. But not just as a loving couple, but as a functionally retarded couple. <laughs> That would just say little nuggets of wisdom we could put on a mug, maybe, or a bumper sticker. <laughs> so I got the uh, club for my car. I got the club, and which is nice because I have an airbag on the steering wheel, so the club leans on it and the horn goes off, which is good at 2 a.m. <laughs> so I'm alerting all malcontents and ne'er-do-wells that I'm home and I'm alone and it's dark. <laughs> and um, so I got mugged. And... They got my knapsack with my comedy notebook in it. So if anybody sees two cholos bombing at the Funny Bone chain, <laughs> that, that, that would be them. And if you could just give me, a, give me a jingle, that'd be good. So I got mugged and I was thinking, wouldn't it be great if, you know, in the animal kingdom, all the animals have like um, devices to protect themselves, predator, prey, the whole thing. Wouldn't it be great if humans, law-abiding humans, had little like devices that protected them, like evolutionarily developed bio, bio, that's a good <laughs> prefix, right? Bio something, biological imperatives that saved you. Like, I'm coming out of my car and a mugger's coming towards me. And then all of a sudden it would be like, see, as Janine blends with the Geo Metro. <laughs> Like, I would just become one with the Geo Metro, and the mugger would go, what? And then move on. That'd be good. And then, okay, so I lost the Geo Metro, and I got a Ford Ranger, and, um, because it was ready. I have no use for a pickup. None. I have no, the only reason I own a Ford Ranger XLT is because it was ready. And, um, and I drove it off the lot. I'm incredibly lazy. I have a very 
can you start my orange approach to life? <laughs> I don't, I don't haggle with salesmen for cars. I don't get better deals on things. I don't know. I'm a straight C student. I don't know. I have never in my life uttered the phrase, is there going to be extra credit on this? Because I would never, I don't do that. I don't know anything about that way of life. And I have no kind of stick to it. In fact, I've only stuck to one thing in my life. I started doing stand-up in 1985. And I have only stuck to the entertainment industry because only that can provide me with the, the uh, sheer uh, depression and self-loathing. That's the only thing that... <laughs> The misery, that's the only thing that can fill that void of hatred. So I've stuck with that. But, um, so I got the Ford Ranger and I was making out with my boyfriend in the front seat of the Ford Ranger and I thought, what the fuck? I'm 30, what, what? Uh, making out and I realized I have this unparalleled fear of intimacy, it's just bizarre. I mean, I'm not gonna go into it now because I'm on a stage with a mic, but I'm just saying that <laughs> It's very odd, and I only like people that don't seem to like me, and blah, 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 and I can't respect people that really like me, and the whole nine, you know. So I'm making out with them the four range. I was thinking, you know, I'm not the only one, though. It seems that there's, like, a generation of people that have this weird fear of intimacy, and they don't get married, and they're in their late 30s, and they should just aim the car for the demographic and have like the Ford Ranger fear of intimacy cab. And it's like just enough room to really make out but not have sex. It like inhibits your range of motion for just that much. And like their tagline would be, when you don't want to bring it indoors because it's too weird. <laughs> when you can't go to his house and he doesn't want to come to yours. You know what I mean? Like that whole that whole thing, and you're making out. But then sometimes you all know, get drunk enough and somebody actually does have sex with me inside. You know, that does happen occasionally where, where I'm in one of those, you know when you're drunk and you're weirdly optimistic and I'm, like things are fine for some weird reason. And then the booze patrol comes over and gives you an award. But um, you know, there's been times when I have actually had sex indoors and I become, it's weird because then you kind of sober up just a little when it's over, you know? And uh, I become like a bartender at 2 a.m. It's like, okay, people, let's move it out. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> let's go. Out. Out. <clears throat> and it's like such an odd checkoff play, you know? Like, when I decide I don't want to see them, then they really like me, you know? They want it to leave until I say I want them to leave, and then, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So I was talking about sex, and you know what's weird about, okay, this might be too much, I might be pushing the envelope, but like, have you ever been like, having sex with someone and you just wanna fucking punch them in the face? <laughs> you know, you're just like, <laughs> it's so weird. I have to really investigate that, but I just wanna punch them in the face. Just stop it, stop fucking me. <laughs> oh, you're gonna get a knuckle sandwich for that one. It's weird. So, um, <clears throat> and then frequently when I drink, you know, I feel bad about it the next day. I feel so bad about it. I wake up, the first thing my eyes pop open in the morning and I get on the phone. What did I say? Who did I make out with? Why do these muscles hurt? What, <laughs> what, did I say anything to you? Did I do anything? Was I impolite in any way? You know, I have like this phone tree of people I call for weird reasons and, um, and I, and, and sometimes I pace at night in my old apartment I pace, you know, and I, and I smoke and I chastise myself for whatever I've done wrong and, you know, I'm, I hate, you know, whatever. And, you know, in my apartment, my old apartment, it, the walls are so thin that I can literally hear my neighbor doing this. <coughs> like, I can hear him doing that or going like, I can hear him do that. So he can hear me talking and then one day we were getting our mail and he goes, I heard you fighting with your boyfriend again last night. You're so mean to him. <laughs> That, I'm talking, I would never be that mean to anyone else. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> so, I should just wear a hair shirt all day. That's what SNL was for me. It was a hair shirt. It was a giant hair shirt. <laughs> SNL to me, and, and I had a lot of great experiences there. God bless them, you know. But SNL to me was this whole experience uh, was, this is how I, I ca encapsulate it. I feel like the Native American who accepted the pox infested blankets from the US Cavalry. <laughs> For me, thank you. I don't feel so good. That's, that's what that experience was. Although, you know, there was some good things out of it. I got to meet Alec Baldwin, who 
I gotta say, Alec Baldwin is the closest thing to James Bond you're gonna find in this mortal coil. I swear to God. Unbelievably great guy. Un unbelievably funny and handsome and like Johnny on the spot. You know, I had a cigarette, he had a lighter. <coughs> Lozenge. You know, he was like right <laughs> on the money. And I got to meet George Clooney. And I know, all right, trite, George Clooney crush. So what? You know what? ER, they got me. I'm not made of wood, people. I'm not made of wood. They got me. That's a writer's construct. The pediatrician, blah, blah, blah. He's trouble with women. He's haggard, blah, blah. And yeah, all right. I, you win, uncle. You got me. I like him. And uh, Caruso from NYPD Blue, this, that guy who's a cop, when they wear the trench coat with the loosened tie, fuck. And like, um... <laughs> You know what the big thing now is the uh, cops with the thing on the necklace. That's a biggie. In the movies, they don't wear badges anymore here. They wear them on the necklace. <laughs> oh, and here's a Valentine's card. This goes with my Ford Ranger thing. I have no concept of linear keeping jokes together. I don't know anything about that, but here would be my Valentine's card that I think I'm going to send my boyfriend. Things have been going so well thus far, I will find more ways to become unavailable to you. <laughs> uh, Okay, I hate high fashion. I hate it. I hate supermodels as celebrity. I hate the fact that we reward people for being genetic freaks. I, I, I really do. I think it's awful. I am. Um, what to do? I just think it's abominable that. Um, okay, we have. You know. The, the crisis of confidence that hits 13, 14 year old girls when they go through, it's just a crime. Reviving Ophelia, read it, it's a good book. 14 million eating disorders in this country, it makes me sick. It makes me sick the way women are the victims of lookism and that high fashion just feeds into coveting and vanity and all that is evil. And um, I, I, I hate them. I, I, I will not back down on this. I don't care how unlikable it makes me seem to you. I hate it. I hate uh, models in general and Oh, when even female journalists will say, Cindy Crawford, one of the bigger models, fuck you, fuck you, <laughs> shut up, I hate, you know you're lying, and shut up, you know, and, and, and when there is statistics, you know, when they, 5, 10, 120, fuck you, I hate you, and, and stop making me feel bad about the way I look about myself, stop at TV and stop at movies, and until as women we all say no, we're not going to starve ourselves, nothing's going to change, so we're on worst enemies a lot of the times, but I still blame men, but, um, because, uh, <laughs> seriously, I, I am such an eyesore when I land at LAX that, <laughs> I mean, here I'm fine, but there, and they can kiss my fat ass, I swear to God. <laughs> and, um, and I won't lose the weight, I promise you this in my career, I promise you, because that would be a sellout. But um, I'm lazy too, yes, but I'm very noble as well. But um, I hate e-fashion file so much. <laughs> And they have these runway shows, and then they have a commentator going, a return to glamour this season. A pretty face is your best asset this season. As opposed to last season, when ugly girls had a free ride all the way through. <laughs> when back fat was all the rage. And by the way, I did star in the movie Back Fat, directed by Ron Howard. But um, then Billy Baldwin signed on, they changed it, they put fire in or something. But, but I used to be the star of the movie Back Fat. And um, I can't believe you have pictures of me on your t-shirt. <laughs> here, come here. They're gonna freak out at this at HBO. This man was here at 3.30 when I got here. I'm half flattered and half scared. That's the thing. So, if you are a potential stalker, I think it's good that we make friends. That's why I run them up. See? All right. See, you've all seen them, so if uh, something happens to me, you've all seen them. That's the most important thing. And you know what would be good with stalkers? Thank you for bringing it up. Um, Again, with the evolutionarily developed things, it goes back to my car. I'll bring this, somehow I will get a tight set somewhere, but wouldn't it be good if people's, um, 
Body language were indicative of their motives. Like, if he were in fact a stalker, he would walk like this. <laughs> and then I would know. So I gotta ask, how, seriously, how uncool is David Copperfield? Seriously. <laughs> Because David Copperfield is really under the impression that he's incredibly cool. And that has blown my mind. And he's so blown, don't look into my eyes. It's just, whoosh. It's just, and he's with Claudia Schiffer, which is so much that, you know who, who Claudia Schiffer's favorite band is? Foreigner. Isn't that just the way? But you know what, so what? She's so, so what? She's still the most popular, so what? She likes Foreigner. <laughs> Thanks for hissing. So I was walking out of the Beverly Center in Los Angeles, which is this big shopping center. In fact, I'm gonna have my name changed to Beverly Center. <laughs> Beverly Center. And I was walking out of the Beverly Center and I was walking to my car and um, there was a dad and his like three-year-old son walking to their car. And then I was like walking here and then there was a empirically speaking attractive blonde walking near me. And I'm not, you know what? I sound like a woman slammer. I don't mean that at all. I hope I haven't come across as that at all. I'm so down with my gender that it's unbelievable. So I hope I haven't at all painted that picture. But um, this blonde who was not down with the cause because she goes to a gym. <laughs> anyway, I feel, I, feel, I feel that way. If you go to the gym and stuff, you're not on my side. You're not. <laughs> you're not. Yeah. I really believe that. I believe it because anybody, I just do it for me because it makes me feel good. You're a liar. You're lying. No one gets on a Stairmaster because, oh, it's just for me. It's a lie. And I, you know what else would be, you know what I think though with a Stairmaster? There's one good thing for a Stairmaster. Okay, you know how like when you wake up in the morning and you like hit your um, clock radio for 10 more minutes? Now, if we could hit the snooze alarm, if we could meld like a Stairmaster and a snooze alarm, because Stairmaster time is the slowest increment of time known to man. So if you get like 10 minutes on a Stairmaster, it really does feel like two hours. If you get that with your clock right in, you hit the snooze bar with a Stairmaster. I'm not really making myself clear, but if you could meld the two, it would be like this 10 minutes of eternity. So anyway, so I was walking out to the, my car and this blonde was walking out to her car and um, the dad ogles the blonde. And she was like so, trite. You know, she had like the Levi's hiked up, cinched at the waist, black belt, black hubba boots, v-neck, Hanes t-shirt. And I know I'm wearing one too, but it, whatever. Um, but not in the same way. She had one on tucked in and the, um, the crispy bangs, kind of crispy. And um, the long blonde hair, walk, 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 blah, blah, blah. And so the um, dad was ogling her and I was walking near her and I thought, God, that is such a bad role model. At least ogle me. Take the road less traveled. Give your son something to grow on, you know? I'm not a lesbian. I look like a lesbian, but no. It's different. And give your son something. And, you know, because that look is so... And, you know, that it speaks volumes about the guy and about the girl. That is, so, that is as unoriginal as a fucking snowball fight. That's how unoriginal that look is to me. Like, snowball fights, you know, like, I used to live in New York, and the first snow, and the couples would tumble out of the bar and, <laughs> and throw a snowball. And all that for because they don't really know each other but then floating on all that snowball fight is for look how whimsical I am fuck me look at I'm whimsical I'm easy going you know I, I'm whimsical you ever watch that show supermarket sweep <laughs> I gotta say I'm you know, I'm, I'm very much anti-marriage and anti-children because I think it's, you know, I'm screwed up. I'm not going to pretend to dress it up in a noble construct of, I'm against it for this reason. I, I'm screwed up. I'll, ta I'll, I'll own that. Um, but I see supermarkets sweep, and I'm envious in a weird way because those are couples that work together. You know what I mean? Those, that's a couple right there. You know, they dress alike. And do you know what I'm talking about? Have you seen on Lifetime, the woman's channel on Supermarket Sweep? Now that's a couple, man. You know what I mean? Like they thought about it before they went in. They put on the same shirt and they made a list of where the most cost-effective products are. Like the meats are here and maybe the sundries are here, but we're gonna do this together. Do you know what I mean? They just, um, 
I mean, that's a Hootie fan, too. That is a Hootie fan. You know what, though? Actually, I take that back. That's a, a bit of a, a notch a s lateral from a Hootie. That's not even really a Hootie fan, is it? Really. They're not even maybe VH1ers, are they? Somehow, perhaps, Enya got in. But um, not even maybe a Hootie fan. But that's a couple that works together. And I enjoy it. They, maybe they go line dancing. <laughs> maybe they watch TNN's uh, White Horse Cafe line dancing. As I do, because I am just, there's a little piece of me, there's a little piece in this cynic that is somewhat envious of people that don't give a fuck about what goes in their ear hole, eye hole, mouth hole, whatever. We accept anything. Who's ever in office as a president? I don't give a damn. Rush Limbaugh? Yeah, he's funny. I don't care. I don't care. Ask the watch denim? Sure. Yeah. I just want to have kids. I don't want to rock the boat. That's all I want to do. Lion King? Absolutely. Soundtrack? Yes. Um, I think I covered it all. Um, Starbucks, Weezer, Mentos, Kathleen Turner. La, 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 la. Did I talk about Speed yet, the movie Speed? Yeah. All right, this will be my last thing. Okay, this will be it, because I, I, ha I have cable in my hotel room and I saw the movie Speed. Highly implausible. Highly. <laughs> I don't buy it. The bus actually stopped for Sandra Bullock when she was running after it. I don't buy it. The rest of it, yes, but not the, not the part where Sam, the bus driver stuff. She knew Sam, Sam, the bus driver that, uh, and you know, they should just ship, go the whole night. You know what I mean? Like they, they were so trite in their portrayal of the movie and everybody's sitting on the bus that every stereotype on the bus, the construction worker, uh, why not just go the whole nine and have like Eskimo with a harpoon sitting back there. <laughs> Indian full headdress, you know, shifty eyed gangster pinstripe suit, fingering a violin case. Why not? Thank you. Good night.